Hey guys, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I need to know. All right, cool. Uh, let me put away some of this stuff. I'm gonna finish studying the girl I was looking at last night. So let me close all this stuff. Get it out of the way. Um, yeah. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to keep studying this. Tonight's the last night. I mean, I worked on it yesterday. I just was not happy with it at all. So. Okay. So yeah, um, I might put music on or something. I'm not going to have Dave call in tonight because he got sick, unfortunately. So he's not feeling too good. He can't really talk. Um, I don't think Trevor's online. I can check. <clears throat> no, I don't see him. I don't see him online. So yeah, if anyone's got any questions or stuff they want me to talk about, uh, I'm more than happy to do that. If not, I'll probably put music on a little bit later in the stream. Or sooner, depending on how, uh, how active the chat is. But yeah, I'll bring the chat over here in case anyone has anything they want to talk about. Get a discussion going, want to ask me any personal questions about secret things. Whatever you want to do. It's all good. texting me. So yeah, there's a couple things in this study that I need to fix and I'm going to try and do that tonight. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, if anyone has anything they want to talk about, just go for it. Just go for it. Because, uh, man, I don't have anything to talk about. I'm very boring, very boring man. Very, very boring. Probably going to be streaming earlier tomorrow. I have somebody waking me up coming over here in the morning, so uh, I won't be waking up late tomorrow. Thank God. I can probably get the stream going at a more reasonable time, which is cool because I've been needing to do that for a while now. Best way to study poses in perspective. Uh, best way to study for poses in perspective. Well, first off is to just understand anatomy in general. And second off would be to um, 
the best way would be to get a model to do the poses. And you can move around and either sketch or take photos of them doing things in different perspectives. But if you can't afford that, uh, the best way, I guess, would just be to do a lot of it. You know, use um, some gesture tool or something. There's a lot of sites that have those that generate gestures in different perspectives. But basically, you have to understand basic anatomy before you start going into complex anatomy. Or you're just going to constantly fall, fall short of what you're trying to do. So I guess the biggest, the biggest tip would be to just constantly study anatomy. And, uh, you know, once you understand the basic shapes that go into human anatomy, you can then start messing with them and um, putting them, you know, in creative poses, things like that. If you understand the blocks that make up the body, you can start drawing them in perspective and figuring it out, you know. Like, uh, I know Loomis and Hogarth both have sections in their books about um, figure and perspective, stuff like that. So I guess that would be my advice. What's better for a study, a quick one or invest some time in it? Both are good. You have to have a balance of both. Um, the, the problem, the, there's, there's inherent flaws with both of them, and you have to be honest with yourself to get away from those flaws. And what I mean by that is that a short study, you can make the excuse of, oh, it's a short study, and stop too soon and not put enough work in it. And with a long study, you can go too long and put too much work in it. And both of those are sure signs of laziness. Because if you're not doing enough work, you're not challenging yourself. And if you're doing too much work, you're wasting time. So, you know, it's really about what's working for you at any given time. You have to be really honest with yourself and understand when you're making excuses. A lot of people can't do that. So, like, I've been doing all two-hour studies for a while now. This girl's face is the first one that broke that rule for me because I did two hours and 15 minutes last night and I still wasn't satisfied. So I'm giving it another hour, maybe hour and a half tonight. But even still, it's a four hour study. That's not super long. I mean, I've done studies on here that go for 10 or 12 hours. <clears throat> But yeah, it's just it's just what works for you at where you are, you know. It all comes down to you knowing yourself and knowing if you're being honest about what you need to do. If you're at a point where you're having a hard time refining things and you're having a hard time finishing things, maybe doing a long study is a better idea. Because, you know, that's going to train you to push something through to finish and really, really kick its ass, you know. At the same time, if you're not getting enough done and you're not quick enough in Photoshop and you have trouble with brush economy and things like that, you know, maybe a longer study is a better idea for where you are because it will get you going faster. It'll teach you how to build an image faster, you know, see problems quicker. Hopefully that answers your question. But yeah, there's no better or worse. It's all relevant to where you are. Like for me right now, quick studies are a better idea. In a couple of months when I'm comfortable with, uh, you know, working the way I'm trying to work, I'll probably switch back to long studies and really work on refining and building up texture and doing finishing touches and things like that. But Right now, it's all about getting quicker with the digital brush, familiarizing myself with Photoshop better, things like that. Regarding the challenge, do all four characters have to be shown as full body? Or can I cut off part of the legs of the character? You don't have to do full body. I'm not. They all have to be there, but you can. You don't have to show their whole body, you know. 
I know someone was saying he's just doing portraits. And like, you know, that's fine. I never said you couldn't do that. I just said all four characters had to be there and you had to show their weapons. So if you're listening, whoever that was that said they were going to do heads in the sky as like a movie poster portrait thing, keep in mind that the weapons are required to be eligible. Do I recommend any art schools in California? Uh, only the obvious ones. Only the ones that everybody says are good, because they're all good. You know, if you go on, like, Concept Arts Forum, there's, like, a whole what school should I go to section. And uh, that's generally the best place. Merlin does have a weapon. He uses magic. That's his weapon. You have to show him using magic. I put that on the blog, dude. I already said that. If you didn't read the blog about the contest, you might be digging yourself a ditch. Yesterday's stream... Weird. It's only 19 minutes and 47 seconds. Huh. Yeah, I guess the first half of yesterday's stream got deleted. Oh, you know why? Because halfway through, remember halfway through, Procaster crashed? Yeah, halfway through yesterday's stream, the stream went black. And I had to restart it. Partway through that Rhino paint over. J-Mob, it has to be obvious that he's casting a spell. If there's lightning coming out of the sky and he's looking at it, it could just be lightning. It depends how you paint it. If it's obvious to me that he's casting a spell, then yeah, you're, you're fine. Hey, Nick. No, RDZ, I, I have no idea how to use the RGB sliders. I don't use them, I never have. Um, I don't know what to tell you about that. Uh, if you ever catch, like, Miles streaming or Hannes, uh, I know they use it. They'd be better suited to answer any questions you have about that, because I've never really tried it. So, I'm not really informed enough to give you an opinion on it. Dan, what do you look for? Oh, let's see. Is it better to keep the characters in the game environment or for you to change the environment? I didn't give you any requirements as far as the environment. Seriously, all these questions are on the Blood Sports blog. All you gotta do is read it. If I don't say something about the environment, then it's totally up to you. You can put it there, you cannot put it there, you know? I didn't give you any requirements on the environment. Well, if you read it, then you know I didn't say anything about the environment. Yeah, it's fine. It's about composition. The only requirement is that the characters are there and that they have their weapons. Uh, the other question, Dan, what do you look for in Golden Boy entries? What makes a successful entry? Uh, the only requirement for a good Golden Boy entry is that we can clearly see that you're pushing yourself. And what we mean by that is we look at the work that you do, and then we look at the weaknesses of it. And if we see that your studies are clearly addressing those things, then you're pushing yourself. So, example, 
if you're not good at realism and you're doing a whole bunch of studies based on realism and you're really addressing things that aren't in your comfort zone, you know, that's, that's great. That's a good post. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. You know, so like if you're, if you do a few really insane studies that push yourself on something you have a hard time with, that's infinitely better than doing a million studies of something we know you're comfortable with. So if you're someone who's really good with anatomy and we look at your golden boy post and all you do is anatomy and it's the same kind of stuff we know you're good at, that doesn't impress us. We don't want to see that. If you're someone who is only good at anime and you're studying realistic light and form and you only do like 10 studies the whole month and it's all, you know, super polished still lifes, that's impressive, you know? It's basically just pushing yourself. That's all it is. Someone told you that Corel Painter is better for drawing. Well, they're an idiot. Nothing's better. It's whatever you invest your time into. They're all the same thing. Some people tell me that, you know, pencils are better than anything for drawing. Other people say that Photoshop's better. Other people say Corel's better. The bottom line is that they're all wrong because what's better is what's more comfortable for you. Whichever one you want to use, whichever one you invest the time to be good at, is what's good for you. Well, you, you shouldn't be worrying about which one's better. You should be worrying about, am I doing anything? Because if you're just sitting around wondering which program to use and not getting anything done, that's a way bigger problem. Because the bottom line is, there's no better or worse when it comes to anything in this industry. Everything's subjective. Everything's valid. If anyone tells you that you're wrong for using Photoshop over Painter, just laugh at them and call them a fucking idiot, because that's what they are. I know people who use Painter that are insane. I know people that use Photoshop that are just as insane. I know people that use watercolor that are incredible. You know, there's absolutely no rule as to which one's better, which one you have to use. Yeah. Yeah, Golden Boys are due no later than the first of every month. The December deadline did already close. But if you have work that you did in December and not January, you can still send it. I'll let you because we didn't do the awards yet. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, I forgot, it was the holidays, so. If you have stuff from December you want to send for submission for Golden Boys, then by all means send it. I don't know when we're doing the Golden Boys. Dave's sick, so I'm going to wait for him to recover because he can't talk. My roommate makes so much noise with his video games when I try to draw. Should I go kick his fat ass? No. You should just get headphones or something. Or I'll politely ask him to turn it down. Or draw somewhere else. If you're in a bad environment, find a new environment. Or find a way to change it positively. Kicking his ass won't make it any better. It'll just make the living situation awkward. How do you submit to Golden Boy email? Yeah, you, uh, you post all of the work you did for the month on your concept art page under your sketchbook thread, not on the Crimson Daggers thread. You post it in your own sketchbook. And then you copy the link to that page of your sketchbook and you send it to me in an email at crimsondaggersdropbox at gmail.com. I 
That's what you do. So upload all your work to your sketchbook in one post. Upload all of it to concept art. And then copy that page. Send it to me, Crimson Daggers Dropbox at gmail.com. Anybody else have any questions or concerns or things they want to talk about? Yeah, I flipped the canvas. I flipped it three times on this one already. I'm probably going to flip it again in a couple minutes after I figure out this chin. You should always flip the canvas. It doesn't just solve anatomy mistakes, it solves tons of things like awkward compositional skews, things that get lost on the left right read, you know, like it, it fixes all kinds of issues. You should always remember to flip your canvas. When you forget to flip your canvas and you work an image up to finish and then you realize you didn't do it and then you flip it, you realize that the whole image is shit and that you basically have to go back to square one and it's very, very annoying. Hey, Melanie. How much time do I spend drawing per day? Uh, on average, I'm working, well, not just drawing, drawing and painting combined. On an average day for me, I spend between 10 and 12 hours uh, working, whether that's painting, drawing, streaming, studies, you know, I'm, I'm working on something art related for 10 to 12 hours a day usually. There are, there's like, there's like one day a week. There's like, there's like usually one day a week where I'll do less because all my errands, I'll end up putting them all off and procrastinating on my errands until there's too many and I can't ignore them. And then I'll, you know, go grocery shopping 
get my hair cut, you know, do laundry, stuff like that, all on the same day. And I'll only get like four hours of work, five hours of work done. That's usually Sunday for me. That's usually my day where I do all my errands and then I work the rest of the week just because I hate Sundays. But, uh, yeah. Trevor didn't start a stream. He's never gonna. Trevor, this is my challenge if you're listening. I'm just gonna keep telling people you don't have what it takes to start a stream. Until you do. I want him to start, but he's just not, he's just not doing it. How can I learn to draw from my mind without a reference? My drawings look like crap. Uh, the best way to learn to draw from your mind is to reference an image and do it as a study and then put this put the reference away and draw it from memory and do that a ton and the more you do that you know like for example when I just sketch around I'm typically drawing something human it's usually some kind of character so I can see all the flaws in what I'm doing and then I'll go study anatomy and then I'll bring that into when I'm sketching around in my sketchbook again and like just doing that repeatedly makes you better. It's called, you know, if you've been on here before, I talk about it all the time, doing memory studies where you study something, then you put the reference away, and then you draw it from memory. Then you pull the reference back out and you look at all the mistakes you made. And that gives you a direction on what to study next, where to go. If you do a whole human figure, for example, and then you do what I just said, and you look at the reference at the end, and you're like, oh, the legs are the worst part then you know you're having trouble with legs, you need to spend more time on them. Regarding the challenge, how refined do the various compositional comps have to be? Currently I'm working on rough compositional thumbnail drawings. Uh, compositional thumbnails are kind of a personal thing. You know, I know people that do super scribbly thumbnails that don't even look like anything, but then when you look at the finished piece, you're like, oh, that's what that was. Like, you might see it even if I don't. On the other hand, I know people that do insanely polished thumbnails that are, like, super, super tight, and all the elements are there. So it's whatever works for you. I don't care how polished it is. I just care that when I look at your thumbnails and then I look at the final image, I can clearly tell what you were thinking and why you were thinking it. I want to see trial and error. I want to see where your ideas for the one you decide to do came from. I want to see, you know, shape interactions, things that worked, things that didn't. And whether or not, you know, that's a sketch versus a bunch of scribbles, you know, I don't care about that. Thumbnail, everybody does thumbnails different. There's no correct way to do it. It's another one of those things in the industry where no one can really tell you how to do that. Thumbnails are just brainstorming. And if you want to be vaguer or more defined in how you do those studies, that's not for me to tell you. Everyone thinks differently. Like, I do, like, a median. I do, like just scribbles and shapes and then I'll polish out little character elements and then I'll call it done. But I don't super refine them. But yeah, it's safer for everybody. Yeah, I don't care what you do them in. 
I just, I mean, I just went through my speech that I go through all the time about how medium doesn't mean anything. I don't care if the painting's digital. If you're more comfortable with acrylic and you have a good scanner, then, you know, do the contest in acrylic. But yeah, I mean, if you do your comps in, in pencil and you render it digital, I, that's fine with me. I don't care. It's like I've got, I'll show you mine, they're on here somewhere. Um, yeah, these are four of my gauntlet comps. So like, I'll show you, I'll zoom in and show you what I did for mine. These are my thumbnails for the composition. It's my trial and error process. So like I've started with the circle one because it was like, you know, the most basic thing I was thinking of is, you know, it's fluid. You can easily divide it up into four wedges for the characters. And, you know, I, I put it down, thought about thirds, thought about where I'd place that circle, thought about the action, the triangle that's implied by stacking the characters. Started little tiny costume details, just rough stuff. Then I moved on to this really expected Frazetta one, and I was like, okay, it's a triangle, it's Frazetta, it's everything you've seen a thousand times, and I just got it out of the way, because that's what's expected. And then, you know, I landed on doing something that was more, you know, uh, negative shape based, where it's not like clearly a circle or a triangle. I was going for kind of like a diamond shape with um, balanced interruptions, so like his head's um, jutting out over here, but it's balanced by her head and her arm down here. And like, you know, he's off center to the right, but it's okay because the wizard's off center to the left. And like, you know, overall there's like a leaning diagonal that leads the eye up. Um, it's implied. I still wasn't totally happy with it though, so I started picking up elements I liked from the other pieces. And I did a composite thumbnail up here where I was like, okay, so it's the same basic thing except I've changed the girl to add more weight in the corner and I made the wizard face forward you know I brought the berserker dude's arm out in front to make like an arrow because I wanted to make that look you know kinda kinda more like a diamond um, you know implied in here and then Dave had a cool suggestion of actually making the girl rushing out over here to make it like an off-balance cross composition which is something I'm gonna be toying with later tonight so, I mean, you can you can work on a composition, and then when you start doing the final, you might see really good changes. And I encourage all of you to, to run with that. You know, you don't, you don't have to do these comps and then make the final exactly what the comp is. You can change little things as you go when you realize it's not working. Because, you know, right now I realize this girl in my sketch is basically just a flipped image of the guy with the bow. Her head's down, she's in three quarters, she's holding her weapon, whatever. It's pretty boring. If I was to do something cool with her dashing off to the left to balance the barbarian dude, that would make a lot more active image, and it would make sense because they're the warrior people, you know. So you'll find changes like that as you go, and I encourage all of you to work with those and you know respond to what the canvas is telling you to do. So when you start laying down the shapes, you know, painting's a lot different than sketching. When you start adding value and color and things like that, all these new imbalances are going to start showing up. And your challenge is to find ways to remedy that and work with it and stick to your original idea, you know, but feel free to, you know, manipulate little things along the way. Because, you know, I didn't even do a color comp yet. But, yeah. So those were mine. And I'm wrapping up this rough study of a girl's face so I can use the, uh, the lighting and some of the anatomy cues for my image of the girl. The hair is going to be pretty random. I don't really need to polish it that much in this study. It's kind of just like I already know what texture brush I'm going to use to do it and I'd rather just do it on the final. a soothing voice. Well, I'm happy to soothe you.
anon three four three four five six four six four. I'm happy to uh, happy to see you. But yeah, I mean, there's all different kinds of things you can do. All different kinds of things you can do for this contest. I'm going to select out this jawline again and start working on blending that. <laughs> yeah, I used to listen to tons of people's live streams when I was working. Back when Hannes was doing Run Regularly and Dave had his going on. I love listening to streams when I work because it's, it's the same kind of thing of like when someone's just talking all the time, you can kind of zone out and go into like autopilot mode with your image. You don't have to think about it and get neurotic. And I like that a lot. It's kind of like, you know, when did you do your best drawings? You did them in school when you were in a class you didn't like because what happened? The teacher gave a lecture and you got to zone out and just draw. And that's when the best ideas come. It's when the brain is trying to escape some kind of situation it's in. So like when I when I listen to lectures like audiobooks or other people's streams, stuff like that, that's my favorite stuff to listen to when I'm drawing because it lets me just kind of go into autopilot. What am I going to be on tomorrow? I'm hoping to be on in the early afternoon. I'm waking up real early. I'm doing a photo shoot with a friend so I can work on the Barbarian. Uh, I'm doing lunch and then I was going to stream immediately after that. Sorry, I'm just trying to get a clean selection here so I don't have to do any correction with a bleed. Yeah, I think the eyes in mine are still too high. They might be too far apart. No, 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 maybe not. I don't know. It's hard for me to tell. This girl's got a really difficult face, which is good, but also frustrating.
anyone else have anything they'd like to talk about? Any questions? Anything like that? I just don't want to make you guys listen to silence. I'm very self-conscious about how quiet I get on the stream sometimes. Uh, let's see. Hey Dan, the time you set for the challenge has to be with the time some companies set their work. Uh, yeah, we set realistic deadlines for the Blood Sports Challenge. I mean, some deadlines are even shorter than two weeks. Some are like immediate. If you're doing work for like movies and stuff, it's pretty much guaranteed that the turnaround is going to be an extremely short amount of time because that industry is all about speed. Um, but yeah, I mean, two weeks is a very reasonable amount of time, considering the kind of work most of you are looking to get. So yeah, it's a very realistic challenge. Uh, what's a good tablet for starters? Uh, I recommend just getting an Intuos 4. I mean, the 3 is good too. There's nothing wrong with the 3. The 4 is just noticeably better. I did work with the 3 for years and it was fine, you know. Until I tried the 4, I didn't think there was anything at all wrong with the 3. There still isn't anything wrong with it. I mean, it's the wrong way to look at it. It's just uh, the 4 is noticeably better. But yeah, they're both good. Either one. 3s are great. 4s are great. Either an Intuos 3 or 4. Get one of those. Am I sending anything to Spectrum this year? Uh, I was actually considering it. I might actually send um, a couple things to Spectrum. I haven't looked into the deadlines yet. Do you know the deadline offhand for the submissions this year? It's probably already passed because I'm a fucking idiot, but... <clears throat> Still life from memory, is it pointless? Uh, a still life from memory is not pointless as long as you've done the still life from life beforehand. You know what I mean? Like, don't just do a still life off the top of your head, because that's pointless. Um, if you, like, set up a still life and it's something, don't make it too complex, because you won't remember everything. But, for example, if you had, like, a metal like tankard, like a cup with a lid, like an old-fashioned, like, you know, Viking cup or something. And you set that up. It's a cylinder, it's metal, it reflects light in a very specific way. And it's a very specific shape. That's a basic study, that one object. If you studied that from life for a couple hours, and you really, really tried to absorb as much as you could from it, and then you got rid of it and tried to recreate it from memory, that is a valid study. Because then you can look at what you did before and compare and contrast what you learned and didn't learn. If you're just sitting down and saying, I'm going to draw something off the top of my head and call it a still life memory study, that's there's no memory involved. You know what I mean? You have to have done it in order to have a memory of it. The book, Spectrum books come out once a year. Uh, they're just paintings. Well, they're all different kinds of paintings. It's it's art from uh, five genres. They do concept art, um, book illustration, editorial, sculpture, and uh, unpublished are usually the categories. So if you just have personal work, it goes into unpublished. If you've done work for a company, it goes into you know whatever that company is, whether it's video game art. Movie art, book or editorial, it goes into one of those respective sections, but it's the best of the best with a contemporary fantasy art. It's it's the best illustrators in the world within the medium of um, fantasy illustration. So that's what Spectrum is. They're excellent books. I highly recommend everybody get the new one, Spectrum 18. It's absolutely fantastic.
all different mediums are in there. You've got digital artists, you've got oil painters, you've got watercolor artists, you've got people using poly resin, you've got people using clay, gouache, colored pencil, mixed media. You know, it's like, it, it really drives home a lot of the stuff we talk about on the stream where your medium isn't important. You know, you can use anything and make great art with it. Those books are like a real testament to that. What kind of paper or board do you use for your acrylic paintings? Do you mount paper on masonite? I've tried mounting, uh, mounting paper on masonite before. That's like uh, the way Donato Gincola does his oil paintings and stuff. Like I got his tutorial, that uh, the mechanic video of concept art, and I, I tried that. That works well. Um, that's all about sealant, though. That won't work unless you do three layers of sealant. Uh, it works good, though. What I prefer to do is... I'll do the drawing on a piece of really, really high quality illustration board. I'll go buy like, you know, a really, really top quality brand of illustration board and I'll do the drawing refined on the board. And then what I'll do is I'll spray fix it five times. I spray fix it, let it dry, spray fix it, let it dry, spray fix it, let it dry five times. And then what that does is it seals my pencil drawing underneath a thick layer of spray fix so the paint won't pick up the graphite. So it's sealed, and then what I can do is I can thin out the watercolors. I mean, uh, I can thin out the acrylics so it's the same kind of transparency as watercolor, and I can wash in all my values or colors and still see the drawing underneath coming through, and then I'll go in with opaque color. That's how I set up my acrylic paintings. I like illustration board a lot. I like that it's, it's thick and kind of heavy. Because uh, I erase a lot. The other thing I do is I'll do the image in like a, an HB lead. I'll do I'll sketch out the whole image and get it accurate in like an HB lead on the illustration board, and then I'll trace the areas um, that are going to be darkest with a really 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 sharp black colored pencil. Not a heavier lead, an actual black colored pencil, because it shows up better than lead. And then when I start painting, I won't lose those lines, because if you just use a light lead and then you spray fix it and paint it, you'll, you'll lose the lines. After two or three washes of acrylic, you won't be able to see your pencil drawing anymore, because it'll be lost under the opaque paint. But if you do it with black colored pencil, those lines stay there for a long time. You can wash over it with really dark colors and still see your drawing. Yeah, I've got the mess of black book. I've got a, I mean, I've got a huge fucking library. I mean, you guys have heard me talk about it on here before. My, my resource library is fucking crazy. I've got, I'm just gonna ballpark it. I've got probably $3,000 worth of books. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, yeah, that's pretty realistic. Because some of the books in it are really expensive. I'm looking at it right now, trying to, yeah, I think that's a pretty accurate figure. But I've been collecting them for years. In an average year, I probably buy about six books. Any good books with lots of armor reference? Yeah, I have tons. You can get uh, Brown and Schneider's uh, Historical Costume and Pictures. That has lots of armor. You can get a big book that they sold. that used to sell at Borders just called Warrior that has huge fold-out pictures of people wearing period armor. Uh, you can get the old eyewitness reference photo books if you can find them anywhere. There's one called Costume, there's one called Military, there's one called Soldier, and there's one called Armor. All of those have really good references in them. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good start.
Yeah, I made her face too tall. It's still too tall. It's so weird. I could lay it on top of the other one, but that is, I consider that cheating. I consider that cheating, because then you're, it's essentially the same as tracing. You know, if I was to lay it on top of the other one to see the flaws, it's like, why not just fucking trace it? Instead of doing that six times, you know, it's the same mentality. This is supposed to be about me spotting flaws with just my eyes, you know? I don't have the District 9 art book. The only reason I don't have it is because I'm not I'm not super into sci-fi. And as cool as the art was, I really liked the design for the prawn in that movie. Um, I'm just not super into sci-fi. I only have a couple sci-fi art books. And by a couple, I mean like four, I think, in my whole collection. Just brushes. I'm using the hard round and the soft round. That's it. I don't think her nose is, if her nose is too wide, it's only a little. I think the big problem with her face right now is the, the eyes are placed weird and then her face tapers down into the chin in a weird way, like her mouth is all fucked up. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out, because it's really pissing me off. I might have to zoom in to fix the mouth.
Yeah. The girl's eye that's farther away on the shadow side of the face is more open than the one closer to us. So it's it's really weird. It makes like a weird little perspective issue. mouth is a little more open than I thought it was though. Yeah, her lips are definitely the hardest part of this image. Oh, man. So what's everybody in the chat working on? What's up, Mike? Well, you're in a very noisy place. Where are you? You're at the, you're at the poor farm? Cool, what's up? Yeah, I'm around. I'm just doing my live stream right now. What's up? Yeah, it's fine. My place is a crazy mess though. I'm probably gonna I'm I'm probably gonna be cleaning. What time are you coming over? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna okay, I'll probably I'll probably still be live streaming. Alright, but Wow, that was a loud fucking phone call. <sighs> Landscape, Hogarth, Blood Sports. Trying to work up the courage to draw. Why do you need courage to draw? Drawing's supposed to be fun. The courage to draw. That sounds so sad. Drawing's supposed to be a fun thing.
If anyone knows Mike the Cruz from the chat, he's coming over. And he's probably drunk. Well, Anon, just because your stuff's bad, or you think it's bad, use that as encouragement to keep drawing. You know, no one is just good automatically. You have to be bad for a long time to get good, you know? Don't let that scare you out of not working. <laughs> uh, wizards, you drunk. Nice. I'm proud of you. Wizards, when are we fucking, when are we hanging out? Let's, let's do this now that the holiday madness is over. When are we hanging out? Let's go to like a museum or something and be friends. I don't know. Whatever sounds good to you, buddy. Oh, right, yeah, let's go to fucking Newport. Let's go to the Illustration Museum. What? Is it really? They got the Norman Rockwell thing up? Fuck. Let's do that. Do you want to do that this weekend or something? Adam Ferrando. Hello? Hello? Hey, man, what's up? Hey, I'm streaming. Can I call you later? Yes. <laughs> wow, it's it's... Wizards. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was you. I thought it was no, Alex. <laughs> I thought it was a conversation I was having with Alex Negria yesterday, <laughs> calling me back in again. What's a good dude? Not much, man. I'm talking to I'm talking to wizards. Yeah, that's me. That's that's him. <laughs> From the chat. Yeah, that's me. Oh, oh, you're talking to the chat people. Yeah, I didn't even realize. Didn't even realize. But um, yeah, we should. I didn't know they had the Rockwell thing up. Yeah, that's crazy. But they have like crazy winter hours, so. Yeah, they're they're weird there. We have to like book a group of like. I think it's like five people or something. Oh, I can do that easy. Yeah, if we get if we get a couple of people, like I think my girlfriend will go, and yeah, maybe her brother that. if he's still around. I'll bring so, Mike. I'll bring Mike. I'll bring Heather. Yeah. So if we get, yeah, that'd be you know I definitely I think in the past year I appreciated him way more. Norman Rockwell. Hold on, I'm trying to see if people want to go right now. Is anyone in the Massachusetts area in, <laughs> in the stream? Do you want to go on a field trip with me and Wizards to look at Norman Rockwell? I think we're the only people. Yeah, I think we are too. <laughs> I, I was talking to the 38 Studios dudes. Maybe there's like one guy who might want to go, but her, That's cool. some people from work or something. I don't know. We'll have to take photos. So we can make everybody feel bad that they weren't there. Oh, look at all the fun we had. Uh, you guys miss? We're in Newport drinking lemonade and eating lobster rolls. Because <laughs> that's all you do in Newport. <laughs> that's all it's good for. The Tennis Hall of Fame. I know. Uh, this is the I house where they, what was the name of that fucking movie that they filmed there? Was it, was it Gone with the Wind? Um... Uh, you know what I'm talking about? There's a mansion there they filmed a really famous movie in. Yeah, me, myself, and Irene, and no. Dumb, Dumb and Dumber, we're both filming right now. So. Liar, liar. No. <laughs> no, what the no, fuck I, is that mansion? It's, uh, I can't, I rem I it's can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah, it's a really uh, nice town. Full of uh, classy people. And no parking. No so. parking at all. 
but it'll be dead during the winter if you check it out. But it's like a... that, or uh, I definitely should get a membership at the MFA because I should be going more often. When's the last time you went? Uh, during the summer when it was warmer. No, we had a we had a huge breakthrough at the MFA. What, what do you mean? Uh, they they included Norman Rockwell in the American Masters Gallery. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw it. He which like means, a... yeah, it means I that the, the 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 arts of artsy fine art douchebags are including illustrators now. Yeah, I saw that. Piece. Which is uh, crazy. It's up at, but they, it's like up by like um, contemporary and like modern art, or pretty much mixing with like the third floor. Yeah, they had like a ton of Jackson Pollock and. They had like this whole like new like American Masters wing or something. Yeah, the Sar- did you see the sergeant stuff? It's crazy. Oh the yeah, sergeant room. Oh yeah, sergeant is all over the MFA. Yeah, they got like a room for him. The real question is, have you gone to the Boston Public Library and seen Sergeant's masterwork? No, I didn't. Like I remember you were talking about it, but I didn't. Get to yeah, it. you gotta go. No one even knows. No one even knows he did it, and he said it was the one thing he was the most proud of. Really, his mural stuff is so different from his. Oh, the mural, dude! The mural stuff at the library doesn't even look like the murals at the MFA. It's enough. Because the murals at the MFA are like very. uh, Yeah. Desaturated or pastel. No, these are like. The murals at the library. If you told me that it was him, then I probably wouldn't have had him. I guess. Murals at the library are like super colorful. He uses gold. Like gold, like actual like gold leaf, on like tons of stuff. Super saturated colors. It's really awesome. <laughs> yeah, I guess when you're him, you paint with gold. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you're living in Paris, hanging out, painting with gold, shipping the painting overseas to be installed in Boston. Uh, Fuck that. I That's crazy. Start, I was doing the daughters. I was copying the daughters. The daughters <laughs> paint it. Yeah. That thing's awesome. Yeah, it's so good. And it's just like, it's kind of creepy, like, uh, just normally, but like it, when you're copying it, just like mine just looks way creepy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sergeant's one of those people that like, he didn't, he didn't dress up his subject matter. Like if he was drawing a chick that looked like a dude, she looks like a dude. Uh-huh. Like he can, he just didn't shy away from that. I don't know. I love all his stuff. I love that uh, I did a replica painting a while ago. You know that huge painting they have he did? It was like fucking massive of the marquee something holding a huge sword. Yeah, that one's, I saw that. That's in, uh, is it in, no, it's not Chicago. Hold on, I'm going to call somebody in. Heather. Who's the, who I'm on. <laughs> I'm on my live stream with like 50 people, so anything you say is being heard by a huge audience. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to hang up now. <laughs> <laughs> That's way too intimidating. Well, me and the other kid I'm talking to, we're going to go look at uh, the Illustration Museum this weekend if you want to come, because I guess they got Ooh. Norman oh, Rockwell. It's this weekend. But... This weekend, Adam. <laughs> we're going. All right. Let me... Heather. When's this weekend, if this weekend... Uh, I don't know. I gotta check. They have weird hours there because they're like a crazy rich couple and they can do whatever they want. Well, that would be excellent. <laughs> I would like to go, but I have to work as you know. You could stay on the stream and keep talking to all these people. No, I'm way too freaked out. <laughs> no, come on. There's only like 85 people here. Only 85? No, it's not mm-hmm. even 85. They're, they're all perverts. How many people are even in here? I'm gonna check right now. Heather, it's only 35 people. No. Come on. So this is this only this is only voice, right? Only audio. Uh, it's yeah. video. No. It Every, is video. Everyone can see you. I g I I Google mapped your house. I can't see you guys though, so that's weird. No, you can't. I got webcams all over your house. I know you do. Hey, I started watching that show you told me to watch. How far are you? Uh, third episode. Oh my god, you need to finish it. I don't like the dude in the S&M outfit who shows up. Oh, you need to wait and find out who it is. I don't like that at all. It's incredibly scandalous. I don't like it in any way. Well, then just continue watching it. Well, I'll keep I'll keep watching it. I'm just very uncomfortable. Yeah, I started watching um, the show is American Horror Story. 
right? That's what it's called. Yes, and I'm obsessed, but I don't like the last episode. The show, the show is called Spookville, USA. It's exactly. um, it's very cliche, but I kind of like it. <laughs> the first, the first episode was like every horror movie I've ever seen in one episode. Well, that's kind of the point. Yeah. But then it gets even better. They were like. It's the caretaker's girl who looks young and sexy to the insane father figure because we all saw The Shining. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then they're like, hold on. There might be Native American ghosts. He's obsessed with fire. Amityville horror. And I'm like, oh, okay. Actually, right. I was actually surprised there isn't any Native American ghosts. They talk about them. Oh, I don't recall that part. That kid's like Native Americans <laughs> cut themselves to get rid of the bad spirits. And I'm like, did they? Oh, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't have anything else. Maybe I shouldn't give this away. So. All right, don't give it away. Don't ruin it for the whole audience. I know, I can't. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just joking. How was work? I didn't get to visit you. Oh, uh, it was all right. They called me in. I was supposed to have the night off, but nothing too exciting happened. So, yeah. sort of commentary. I did get to clean the bathroom, so that's pretty exciting. That's That's awesome. It's pretty incredible. They have a really like, crazy. They have a really crazy bathroom with urinals that have stall shutters. They do. They do. Like cowboy style men's room urinals. It's yeah. kind of weird. <laughs> Only one of them, though, because you get to make the decision whether or not you want to be seen as you're using. The yeah. The only the only time I went there, I was using the urinal, and one of the cooks came in, and I went, "I love these these bathrooms." As I was as I was in the stall, I just said that to him. Oh, very good! And I was like, okay. It didn't really say that. Yeah, it was like bathroom, very good. It's a hibachi it's restaurant. Good. Just That's to hilarious. let you guys know. Hysterical. Bathroom, very good. That's like, actually it's actually happened to me a few times as I'm in the process of cleaning the bathroom. The hibachi chef comes in and just starts pissing right next to you. Exactly. And but he's like, very good. The chef, because I'd be awkward because I work with them every day. Yeah. But some of the customers, the drug customers out there, doses and doses of free sake, come in, stumble in, don't realize I'm there, <laughs> and just start peeing like, in front of them. So do they, just, do they just flip shrimp at you all the time? Because if I could aim shrimp that well, that's all I'd do. They don't <laughs> flip shrimp at me. I have mm. asked if they could teach me how to flare the hibachi do you work at a hibachi restaurant? Yeah, I work at a hibachi restaurant. In Dartmouth. We could go, Adam, we could we could go to it. You need to come visit me. I try to bug Dan every time I work. Mm-hmm. And I never get to go because no one ever wants to go. I don't have any money. I'm a huge piece of shit. Well, hibachi is like $70. Yeah, to be fair. It's it pretty expensive, but you can split something. And you get, a, it's only a six ninety five sharing charge. Yeah, I love that they charge you money to share a plate. But you get a free soup and salad with that. Not necessarily free. Like, I could literally get it regular. I could get it regular price, pick up my phone and go, oh no, I have to leave. Can I get a box? And then share it in the car and not pay the seven bucks. This is true. But, oh well. I've, I've given people chances and I let them get away with it every now and then. I shouldn't because that would mean more money for me on the t- Ben. Yeah. Anyway. You just want me to come see you at work because you know I always give you at least ten bucks. That is not true. That's I the only them. reason you want me to come. No, because I usually try to find a way to get it back. Hold on, Mike the Cruz is here and I'm in my boxers. Yeah. Mike, is the door open? Oh, Heather, stay on. We're gonna have a huge conversation. Alright, here we go. Mike, I'm in my boxers. Sweet. My apartment smells like trash because I'm filth. Come on in. <laughs> hey, Dan, I got, I got to run in and eat dinner. God damn it, Adam. You called me. <laughs> well, yeah. I was excited. Yeah. You called me, and then five minutes later, you got to eat. It was my voice. Voice meeting you, Adam. I got Heather Hostetter on Skype. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Mike. Damn it, Mike. Hi, Mike. Mike how are you? Um, uh, cold. He's cold. Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. He, he was at the pork farm. The PF? Yeah. Just now? He just came from there. Mike, so that's you, why he has the one word answers? Mike, you drunk? Nah, I drink one beer, so I'm uh, alcoholic uh, now. Mike shit faced. Just one. I'm actually half naked right now. And Mike's, half, Mike's half naked. He's half naked. I, I know. 
I can tell by the tone in your voice. Mike's rubbing. Oh, that would have had enough. He's rubbing my shoulders. Feels good. Oh, like yeah. an episode of The Office where the whole conversation is being recorded. That's the one. <laughs> Making things up that Dwight does. That's the one. Man, <laughs> I'm just painting this girl's face. What girl? If you were on my stream, you'd know. All right, well, give me this website www.livestream.com slash Daniel's Danger Room. Okay, hold on one second. I'm so just What? It is. Good catch, Mike. Dan's Danger Room? Daniel's Danger Room. Daniel's. Yeah. Room. You don't want to misspell it. See, this is how I get Heather over her fear of large groups, is I just trick her into staying on. He does. He does, he does. Okay, it's not working. What? <sighs> you, obviously, you obviously typed it wrong. Yes. Here you go. I'm going to copy it. If you followed me on Twitter, you'd know this, but... I don't have a Twitter. I don't tweet. Erica's got a Twitter. Log into hers. I don't know hers. Oh, my God. There you go. I sent you a. It's gonna play a commercial. Don't worry about it. Time make. This girl says, "Okay, I see." Time make. Time make my money. Join the battle. Star Wars public. Shut off the volume. Shut off the volume. Shut off the volume on the stream. Shut off the volume on the stream. Are you talking to me right now? I didn't realize you were talking to me. Shut off the volume on the stream. Shut off the volume on the stream. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. <laughs> There's a little volume button in the bottom left. Oh, you got it. I thought you were yelling at Mike for some reason. I thought Mike was. I'm just screaming at Mike. Shut off the volume! <laughs> You're standing next to me. Shut it off. No. <laughs> All right, I fixed it. All right, good. <laughs> Did I fix it? I don't know. Yeah, you fixed it. There's no more echo. Excellent. So what's up? <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'm painting this girl's face. Her lips are proving difficult. I see, I see. Still doing a great job though, Daniel. Oh, come on. This is what you need. You need a second voice on here, so I can just give you a compliment the whole time. Yeah. Great job. This is excellent. You're achieving your goals. Level up. So what's, uh, are you, are you home alone right now? I am. Is anyone around, or are they all still back in Bellarica? Everybody's still at home, and Corinna is still in New Zealand. Oh yeah, she's in New Zealand, I forgot. Erica is coming back tomorrow evening. Like I even care. Oh, I know. Like I even care. God. So yeah, this is uh, that's what I do. Every day. Amazing. Every day. I'm saving this. Yeah, you can hear me talk uh, every day of the week. Should have a bedtime stream. I should do a bedtime stream, just tell stories. Yeah, just read Good Night Moon. That's the one, Good Night Moon. Sing it. Sing it in your opera voice. Yep. Or just make it one long word like you like to do with other things. That is true, I do enjoy that. Man, this girl, I'm going to have to call it quits soon. Spending too, spending, spending too long on this girl. Are you going to start something else? What's that? Are you going to start something else? Uh, well, I'm probably going to probably gonna start a painting of a dude. I've got these four characters I'm trying to do, and I'm doing these studies to try and make the work better. 
so this is the girl and I studied uh, where is it I'll, I'll pull it up <clears throat> I'll pull it up if I can yeah I did this study of this dude uh, two days ago Wow. looking all dude-ish this girl's face is really difficult. It's all, it's got a weird slant to it. And it's all peachy. Yeah, it's all colors that I suck at. I think I figured out what I did wrong with her lips. Maybe I can fix it. So tell me some, tell me some news. Tell me some news, Heather. No, I'm watching too focusly. Focus. Come on. Focus. Come on. I don't have any news. I don't like how attractive the red-headed uh, ghost is when she's young. You don't like it? No. Why? Because then she looks super gross and old. When she's old? Because you would totally be one of those men that she seduced. Because I'm like, I'm like, oh, she's really cute. And then I'm like, uh, uh. It works. That's her part of her curse. Like when he, when, he, when he walks in, she's playing with herself. And I'm like, what is this? This isn't cable. <laughs> and then but he it is cable. does and he starts crying. Oh, that's the best scene in the whole show. <laughs> guys, the old man guys, is on his window just staring at him. It's hysterical. Here's a spoiler, guys. Uh, a man masturbates naked while crying <laughs> he's naked and crying and masturbating at the same time and then it pans over to a window and there's an old man in a suit outside watching him masturbate while crying american <laughs> horror story that new show first episode first episode a guy cries while masturbating and it's one of the funniest things i've ever seen <laughs> it's like the best thing it's seriously one of the funniest things i've ever seen I almost want to put it on, but my stream might get deleted if I do that. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. I just love how he's like, he's like angry masturbating at first. He's like, yeah. I know. And then it turns out. He's really loud. He's one of those really obnoxiously loud men. When he's <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like a loud masturbator. And then, okay. and then he starts crying. It like, it transforms from hate into, into sadness. Exactly. And it's really fucking awkward, and I, oh, it was so funny. It's like you for it, but horrible. It's, it's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Transitions. Yeah, it's so fucking funny. That was easily the best thing. I just want more yeah. of that. Now you still want to just watch the show forever, don't you? The thing I like about the show is that it has tons of awkward stuff. Like, it's more like a comedy show for me right now. But it, that's why I love it. Because it's got its moments of everything. I hate the drama, I hate the, the action, the adventure, the horror, the comedy. The, you know the the S and M suit. Bothers but it's me. only hidden undertones. The S and M suit bothers me a little bit. You'll learn to love it. So why is everybody? Do they do they explain why everybody's hallucinating? Who's hallucinating? Everybody. Like why he sees that. Made as a young woman, why she sees the S and M thing as her husband, like they why? They kind of explain it, but okay. there's a lot of things left out. And I'm sure that's probably where the second, the whole second season will come in because a lot happens. If you continue to watch this season, a lot happens. Yeah, it's gonna get a comedy award. I don't want to give it away to anybody. Well, a comedy award. Like a black comedy. It's just got a lot of fucked up stuff in it that I shouldn't laugh at because I know it's not politically correct, but I just die laughing and I can't help it. Yeah. yeah. Like when she locks her retarded daughter in that closet full of mirrors and she just goes, ah, ah, and she's looking at all the mirrors. Like I died laughing and I was like, I'm a horrible fucking person. I'm such a bad person. The acting was just so horrible though. Like I couldn't help it. Because you know it's fake. Yeah, I know, but it's just I shouldn't laugh at that. No, it's okay. I, I laugh at things like that, too. That's what horror movies are for, I think. Yeah. Makes me feel better laughing at them than getting that's a pretty. Them. That's a pretty bold move, though. Yeah. Showing that. Showing a crying man masturbating. Yeah. 
There's a lot more that happens. It just fucked with your head, that show. Do we get to see him cry while masturbating a second time? Cause... I don't think that happens again. That might be a once in a lifetime thing that Man. we get to see. Damn it. I'm Man. sorry. Now you're never going to watch it again, are you? I'm going to make that my new avatar on every website. I'm going to make a GIF image of him beating off and crying. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Just a GIF animation of him crying, beating uh, it. It's going to say Daniel Warren with that next to it everywhere. Yeah, if you if anyone on here knows how to animate gifts and they want to make that for me, I'll definitely use it. This you, person you guys all have my email. Just send it over. <laughs> it is horrible, Mike, but I have to have it. Uh, my uh, uh, smoking bowl one time. It's like I was driving down the highway, so this guy started really naked tipping off. <laughs> yeah, you told me about that. <laughs> what? Mike's a guy on the side of the road, naked, jerking off. Where on the side of the road? What road? Oh, his mother's side. On the highway. On the highway. On the highway. Maybe he was a ghost. Probably was. Jeff Somebody knows. was just driving along and just realized that he had to stop at that moment because... Terrible things happen on Massachusetts highways. I believe that. I believe that. Terrible things. Mm-hmm. All right, Daniel. Don't even hang up. Adam yes. already Adam already left. I can't I can't deal with more rejection. I'm not rejecting, I'm just Don't deny him ever. Shut bike. You bitch. No. That's where it becomes anger. <laughs> Fine, hang and up. Start crying. I'll find Batman and you will And then I out. start crying and then I start masturbating. <laughs> That's what it is. I don't want that to happen now, but please don't make it happen. And then it pans over and Mike's watching me. <laughs> and I'm crying. <laughs> god. Oh my um, god. How much longer are you on the stream for? Uh, I'm probably gonna start. I, I always paint for a while, then I crit other people's stuff. I'm probably gonna start the crit star uh, soon. Oh, cool. I'll I be, might still I'll, watch, but not have my voice included. Why? That's stupid. Because it's still intimidating. Come on! <laughs> All right, whatever. I'll be off of here soon, and then you can tell me private things. And then Skype me. Afterwards. Okay. All right. Okay. So it's all. It was nice being a part of this. Yeah, for the limited time you chose to be a part of it. It wasn't that limited. I feel like. It's... All right. Yeah, I'll see you. <laughs> Bye. I don't know. Hmm. Her lips are still fucked up. I made them too wide. Got Skyrim over there, Mike, if you want to play it. Uh, I played it for 10 minutes and it took him off. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous. I was put on playing Dark Souls and I played that and I was like, I'm not getting sucked in. You were like, yeah, I learned, I learned this lesson. What's the kind of stuff you're going to school for, little Bazinga? What, uh, what specifically are you talking about? Hey, I went. Tawny. I'm going to use your real name because I know you. Yeah, man. Just start doing photo studies. I'm not really editing this photo. I'm just kind of copying it. Doing a study of it. But yeah, man. If you want to do it, do it. You don't need a school to tell you what to do and not do. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is just a photo. Just not over. No, Mike, I'm not starting it over. Do it now. This is just like a painting. It's not a photo manipulation. It's just layering stuff. I'm trying to make it look as close to the photo as possible within a reasonable amount of time. But yeah, I'm what? I'm I'm three and a half hours into this. This is a three and a half hour study. Yeah, three and a half into this one. Well, it's just practice, dude. I used to be really terrible. I mean, I'm still bad at this. This isn't even good. You should see some of the studies that other people in the group do. They're ridiculous. What? Bro. Bro, what? Bro. Bro, what? Bro. Bro, what? Bro, what? Nah, man, you gotta see the studies. Like, you should you should join up with the Daggers, dude. I don't know if you're part of the group or not. I haven't seen you on here before, though, so... You should join up. If you're a graphic designer and you're looking to get better at doing whatever you're doing, you should join up and do studies and... Come to the streams and be part of the community. Yeah, Tani is like our Tani's like our shield maiden. She's like one of the only girl daggers that is here consistently. Yes, that is the one I'm talking about, the Aram. I don't know what it costs online, but when they sold it at Borders, before Borders went out of business, it was only 10 bucks. I can show you the book, actually. Can I switch over to... No, I can't. Fuck. I was going to say I just switch over to video and just show it to you. Actually, yeah. Millcast is here pretty regularly. Sorry. Little Bazanga, feel free to uh, drop a link to your DeviantArt in the chat. And despite whatever you want to do with art, you can still join the group. Figure it out as you go. It's free, you know? So it's like, why not? Hey wizards, are you still in the chat? I know you uh you're eating or whatever, but are you still are you still in the chat? Uh I'm gonna be in Providence uh Friday night. I'm taking my brother to the airport because he's uh flying out to Florida. So maybe I'll get in touch with you or something. Taking my brother down to TF Green. Alright guys, I'm still not totally happy with this study. But it's definitely way better than it was yesterday. Well, thank you, Daniel. It's like you tried. I did try. You a lot more blending going on. Uh, I'm going to do the crits part now. I've been on for about an hour and a half, and I just want to get the crits over with. 
So, if anyone has any work they want to paint over on, or anything they need some direction on, or just a general crit, uh, by all means, send it over. I'll throw it up on the screen, and uh, we will do our best. El Rancho Grande. Do they have quesadillas? Because I'll totally eat a quesadilla. One thing you got to understand about me, buddy, is my obsession with quesadillas. I see SK Mop has something. Crit. So I'm going to save this. And then take a look at SK Mop's work. I'm not that pretty, otherwise I'd get you to do one of my photos. Come on! Everyone's beautiful in their own way. Hi, I'm Dan Warren. I'm here to make you feel good. Alright, so we got a character here. Alright, so what's this for? Is this just for your portfolio? Is this for a client? Because right off the bat, I gotta tell you, this reads as a costume design for production because the pose you put it in, I don't know what the deal is with the pose, you gotta tell me. But with the arm out like that and one arm down, it looks like this is actually a drawing being made for a tailor. So they can see how the fabric falls. It looks like production art for like a stage show or something. Um, is it an incomplete illustration? Is something else going there? Because, uh, yeah. for an entertainment design portfolio so concept art is this like going to be for like a game or something commanding okay he doesn't look commanding he looks well, I'll show you um, one thing you got to keep in mind if the arm is fully extended, the arc of the arm would come all the way down to here. So the proportion of that arm is way off. It looks like the other hand falls about here, considering where the sleeve is on the other hand, because we don't see it poking out down here. So the first thing I would do. is copy this hand and move it in to shorten the arm to like this and like that because having the arm out that long just doesn't make sense Um, okay, so this doesn't look commanding uh, because his face doesn't look commanding. He looks kind of lazy and lethargic, and the pose is also kind of lazy and lethargic. His hand is tilted down, and what that does is it makes it look very lazy and kind of like, it looks like he's brushing somebody away, just being like, you know, like, I don't want my tea today. Mm, like that classic, like, you know, lazy child royalty kind of thing. That's sort of like, away with my servants, very tired. Like, that's what it looks like to me. Um, if you... It's supposed to be Bastion from The NeverEnding Story? Oh. Is it supposed to be Bastion after he becomes that hero? after he enters Fantastica and does all that crazy stuff. Oh, okay. 
Um, yeah, he looks very tired. That's the only thing. Well, if it's supposed to be Bastion, there's a couple things you should do. Because I've actually read the story. And I know what I'm talking about. If he's commanding, if that's what you wanted to go for, have him actually pointing. You know, don't have the hand lazy and turned down. Have him actually pointing. If that's what you're going for. You know, that's going to convey commanding a lot better. The other thing you want to keep in mind is that his expression is getting to where it needs to be, but you can toy with the eyebrows and stuff a lot more. Because the thing about Bastion is, when he loses his memory in the story, he becomes kind of an asshole. He gets really self-obsessed and he thinks that he's the greatest thing in the world and he forgets that it was actually like a Treyu that saved everything. And he becomes like totally full of himself and angry. And, uh, yeah, so if you tilt the eyebrows in to make him look more frustrated than tired, and you pinch the eyes down a little to make it look like he's angry, let me zoom in on the face a bit more and we'll play with this. Now, the other thing about Bastion in the second half of the book is that he adopts this persona of this hero who's very influenced by like the old Sinbad stories. He gets this kind of Middle Eastern hero look, which um, you're starting to develop. I think you can push it a bit further because he's got a really cool, you know, you've made, you've made the head look pretty cool, but the rest of the body seems a little scarce in terms of the design. Maybe adding some hair in here would be a cool touch. Because the thing is, is that, for those of you that don't know, in the first half of the story, he's Bastion Balthazar Bucks. And he's a very chubby, unpopular kid. And in the second half of the book, when he gets into Fantastica, he imagines himself as the hero he never was. He becomes all these things that he never thought he was as a kid, and he becomes skinny, he becomes heroic, he adopts this whole hero personality. And as a result, he becomes kind of a dick. So, I'm going to give him hair falling on the side over here, and coming in under the ear. Cool Falco. I did some never ending story sketch stuff when I was in school. So I'm a little a little biased because I have worked with this story and I love it. So I'm gonna change his hair to be more luscious and kind of curly and you know the typical, you know, heroic he's got these locks. You know, so I'm going to change that to give him that kind of sumptuous hair kind of deal. Uh, the next thing I'm going to change, let's see, I don't mind the hat so much. I feel like you could do more with it. The colors are very desaturated. Um, you know, it looks like you're going for gold. And if you're going for gold, I mean, you got to add, you know, the shine. You know, it looks like the light's coming from over here. So, if you're going for gold, you want the reflectivity. You want this to look 
priceless. You want it to look expensive, you know. You want it to look like something a, a king would wear. Now the other thing is you've got these kind of horns and then you've got this kind of seashell thing on the top. Uh, one thing you might want to do is kind of make this look more beveled and run with that seashell design. It'll help it sit better with the horns, fan out the edges a bit, fan out the bottom of the thing. And then I see that you were adding some tentative stuff in the back. I would probably bring that back. Yeah, that's the thing is you want repeated shapes. Repeated shapes is, are very important things to uh, a successful concept. So if your bastion is wearing like, you know, something thorny like this, that's cool. But you should bring back the seashells in a couple of places. One good place to do it is here, coming down the sides as a guard for the cloth. But yeah, so let me see. And another place to do it would be on this rim, because you typically want a curve, a downward curve to push the power of the brow on a crown like this. So, I'm going to repeat that, that kind of round shape here. Is this making sense so far, dude? He has a very specific, um, I can't recall it because it's been a while since I read the book, but he has a very specific description of what he looks like in the book. I know he's wearing some kind of like turban thing which I would downplay the arc of the turban a bit, make it more round than pointed. Um, but yeah, I can't really remember anything else about it. Yeah, I'll get to the lower part. I would bring the turban out on the sides to make it look like it's, you know, more puffy than tall and have the gold thing just be kind of like a frame that goes around it. So like see what that does in terms of making it read as a turban. That looks like it's wrapped around his head. Yeah, it is kind of skewed. I wasn't sure if the tall, thin thing was a style or... Yeah, the face is a little skewed. You might want to flip more to correct that. 
All right, so let's get into the costume. Um, before I do, just lighten this up to make it pop against the background and make it wrapping up like that. Yeah, just lightening it up a little bit is going to help make it jump out a lot. Just on the edge. Okay. So... I can't remember what he's supposed to look like in the book. I know he has a sword, though. He has a sword that I can't remember. Isn't it like the old mythological, like, as long as he's using it for a true purpose or something, or as long as he's using it for good, the sword never fails? I can't exactly remember, but I know he has a magic sword. Yeah, it had a cool name, like Sekanda. But you haven't added the sword. I mean, there's there's basic elements of this that you need to fix. Like, he has a gold crown and gold boots, but gold doesn't show up anywhere else, though. So, like, an obvious thing would be add some kind of gold thing on the belt. Maybe not that huge. Just a subtle something. Like trim? Yeah. Yeah, you could add gold into the trim of his thing. You know? Didn't he wear, like, all blue and white in the book? I can't remember. It had, like, a really definitive description. Uh, the other thing is, is that you added that, like, purple trim on all the edges of the clothes, but not on the hand. So, and the other thing is, is if he's royalty, he's going to have a bagged sleeve. Because, uh, yeah, that's just the shirt that you designed would have a bagged sleeve. It just would, based on how you drew it. It fans out at the bottom like a kimono or something. Yeah, well, I mean, even if the description in the book is specific, you can use artistic license and deviate. I mean, this is your bastion doesn't have to be exactly what the book is. So we're going to roll with your design. Bring the shoulder up and then bring this up to compensate because you want him to have powerful shoulders and not look like he's slouching. Because one of the things I said in the beginning is he looks lazy is because he was slouching. Bring the shoulder up. Don't make it slouching because then he'll look more powerful. And then what I would do is, I wouldn't give him a hilt, I mean, I wouldn't give him a scabbard. What I would do, because you're losing this hand, and it just seems like hand fear. You know, it seems like that typical thing of, like, people find ways to get rid of hands when they don't want to draw them. I would bring the hand out ever so slightly, down here at the side. You know, render it down here. And I would actually make him... Like, I know you're stylizing it. I'm going to talk about the legs in a minute. I know you're stylizing it, but the anatomy still needs to be within a uniform style. But what I would do is probably something like this. I actually give him the sword. And that'll balance out the arm. Because with that arm coming out as far as it is, you're running into a really tough issue of, um, you know, balancing the, the character because it's so heavy on the right-hand side. So adding the sword down here and repeating the shapes of the crown and things in the sword will balance out the other arm. It won't totally balance it out, but it'll be enough. Um, 
Um, you need to recrop. That's another thing. I'm going to do that right now. You need to recrop to compensate for the changes I'm making. So. So, yeah, recrop it. I'm going to make him a little bigger at the end of this. Now, one thing I'd say is crop in. You've got a lot of space you're not doing anything with, especially below the feet. There's really nothing going on down there at all. You know? So if you crop into something more like this, it's going to work a little better. So, let's see. There's a couple little changes I'm going to make. Yeah, so. Giving him the sword. Make the sword match the crown. That's going to be the tough thing, is that the crown looks very Middle Eastern because of the turban. So the sword also, you know, it's going to have to be curved. It's going to have to look Middle Eastern. And then, because it's coming out so far at the bottom, it's going to have to be catching some light at the end of it. Wherever the shadow ends and reflected light off the ground. So, that balances the arm, you see? Raising the shoulder and balancing the arm, how that helps. Um, another thing you can do, just because you have the wind blowing because the turbine is moving, um, another thing you can do is from behind to balance out this side, maybe add the sash of the belt you know, reference this, look at how they work in space. You know, have the other end of it kind of curling under, maybe something. You can get creative with this, you don't have to do it the way that I am, but it might be another way to balance out the character and take away from the power of that hand. Um, if he's wearing chainmail, I think he is. It looks like you rendered it that way. Either make it silver or gold. Or silver with gold lining. Silver with gold lining would probably work best. It'll bring the colors from the sword back into the character. And then if you wanted to, you could add the scabbard for Seconda and make it like a repeated form of the sword. You could have it on a chain from his belt. to show that he has unsheathed it, because the unsheathing is important. Is all this making sense? I'm just trying to, I always like to check, make sure I'm not pissing people off or doing things that are uncalled for.
Oh, no, no, I don't care if you're not responding. I just have to check and make sure that I'm not, like, doing something wrong. I know he's a kid and that you're stylizing the figure, but I would still bring the feet down a little bit more and I would make them bigger. Just a little bit bigger. Widening the legs a bit to compensate. Because the big thing is, right now, he's a... Uh, oh, whoops. His legs aren't directly underneath the head, and it's causing an imbalance in the figure. You know what I mean? You want to take a line tool and figure out, you know, exactly where the legs are going to have to be to balance that out. I'm just going to eyeball it right now at where it is. <coughs> um, yeah. With the belt, I won't I won't go into it, but uh you know, repeat the shapes that are in the crown and the belt, the kind of shell and horn shapes. Make that work. And then let's see. One thing, there's only one other thing I'm going to say, um, and that is you might want to consider putting the arm in a three-quarter as opposed to directly off in profile. And what I mean by that is this, I'll show you. pointing out somewhere towards the viewer as opposed to pointing off the page. It'll get rid of that weird imbalance of weight by adding that totally perpendicular line of the arm shooting out at a 90 degree angle. And, you know, you can have the finger coming out, the other fingers curling, the thumb. You can make it slightly larger because it's coming forward. Um. You know, shadow in here. And then, you know, you got to compensate because this way you can show the armpit. You know what I mean? You can show how the arm is connecting to the body, which is important because you didn't have that in the other one. It just kind of shot off to the side. See what I mean? So bringing that forward. I think personally that that looks better. And it continues the diagonal of the sword. You see how the arm is making like an implied connection between the upward diagonal of the piece. I mean, you could even make it more up than I have it and really push the diagonal if you wanted to. But even like this, it's pushing that diagonal shape, which is what you want. Um, yeah, and then if you were to do this, you know, there's a little change you might want to make, which is uh, his eyes would be more centered as a result because he's now pointing forward. Oh, and his eyes aren't catching any light, which you're going to want to fix. No matter how you render this, his eyes should be catching light.
Uh, I don't know what you think about the ARM SKM op, but I would change it to something more like this. Even if he's not pointing and his fingers are fanning out, it still looks more like, you know, actually, yeah, I like the fingers fanning out even more. So even if he's not pointing and he's just like, stay back, or, you know, whatever the fuck he's saying. You know, reference it. Make it work for you. However you want to render the hand. I'm just kind of bullshitting shapes here. Now my hand's way too big, but you get the idea. It's a terrible hand, forgive me. I'm just bullshitting. Uh, but yeah, it's a terrible hand. Uh, yeah. And then you've got this circle here on the tabard, and it's not really doing anything. So you could bring the gold leaf into it, make some designs, repeat it going up, you know, make it, make it the two snakes eating each other, you know, make it the Auron, make it the symbol of his coming, because that's what it is. Oh, he's not wearing the Auron, dude. What am I even talking about? That's the biggest problem. That's like the biggest design problem in this whole thing, is he's not wearing his symbol of office. He has to have that. It's absolutely integral to the story. He's not Bastion without the pendant. Yeah, and then you can repeat it down the robe, you know? So anyway, I hope that helped. I don't know, there's, there's more I'd do to it, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to stop. Make these changes and then I'll, you know, I'll recrit it and we'll take a look at it. But I think adding the sword and scabbard are really going to help balance it, and I think changing the hand is really going to help balance it. Uh, so, here's what it was. And here's what it is. Was. Is was is oh, yeah. that's fine dude go ahead uh dan question how big do you have to make the dimensions for something maybe to not be printed uh that depends how big you're printing it dude totally depends it's all different. It should be at least 300 DPA. Does anyone have something else they want me to crit? Or should I go? 
Yeah, man, I hope that helps. It looks more like Bastion now. And I might be wrong. I might be wrong. You should check the book. But I think... I think Bastion had a cape. And if he did have a cape, then you could do a really cool compositional nod. You know, like this, fanning out, pushing the diagonal, you know what I mean? I think he had a cape. I'm not sure. You should look it up, though. Uh, Dark Lord Andy posted something. Falcor. Uh, Dark Lord Andy, did you want a paint over? Or were you just posting it because it was also a never ending story? Anya, baby. I don't charge for paint overs, no, it's all free. You know what? I'll uh I'll do a paint over of it. Let's stick with the never ending story theme. Screw it. We got Bastion over here, and I think he has a cape. You can check on it though. Um Take a look at your pick. That's a photo. I don't do pan overs of photos. I do pan overs of art. Sorry. I do art. Alright, so we're going to do Falcor now. We did a tray. And now we're going to do Falcor. And it's awesome. I can't wait. So, you're obviously looking at, like, ferrets and dogs. Hey, how do you do an imaginative painting? You use your imagination and then you paint. Anya, I love cats. Okay, so, here we go. I like the palette a lot, I like the light a lot, I even like the body a lot, but there's one thing I don't like at all, and I'll tell you what it is. There's no narrative, and the second thing I don't like at all is that he doesn't look like a dragon in the face, okay? And in the book it clearly says he's a dragon with silver scales and white hair. So, guess what? We're going to work on your face. I don't care that you gave it a dog muzzle. I don't care that you gave it basically a dog face. But it doesn't look like a dragon. So I'm just going to add some elements. It's kind of a long, thin, wavy dragon. So I'm going to add some stuff influenced from Japanese design of dragons. Like the, you know, the two big things coming off the head made of hair or scale, those kind of catfish things. I'm going to add some on the sides too. You can make them out of hair. It was a dog thing in the movie, but I'm not talking about the movie, I'm talking about the book. I'm going straight to the source, dude. 
in the book, it's a dragon with silver scales and white hair. So, I'm going to raise the head up by adding these things to it. I'm going to bring the eyebrows out as well on the sides. can I do here? I brought down the fur under the eye. I brought the things up on the head. Oh, okay, one other thing I can do. There's not a lot of, like, cool color in here. And one thing you might be able to do is kind of kind of fleck it in. I don't know if this is going to work really well. I'm thinking you can add the scales kind of under this model of hair here. But I don't want them to be so much blue as like a cool silver. And then you could bring that color back under the arm back here. You know, areas where the, the fur might not totally be covering. Patches of scale. You know, obviously you're going to go in and do, you know, make it look good, polish it out. If you do this, you don't have to, obviously. I'm just making suggestions. Um, I like this. Does it cost for me to do a study? No, it's free. It's free. The other thing I like is that you added this weight under the head, and it kind of implies that it's a beard which I kind of dig, and I might actually give it some kind of tuft under here that curls out like as kind of a beard thing to kind of mimic the shapes in the head. To mimic those two things I added, I might, I might curl it out down here to make it look kind of like a beard. I would go crazy with the hair as you get closer to the face and really have fun with it. I might also bring the blue back right on the top. Yeah, with your work, you did that robot, right? That robot I painted over, the female robot thing that was standing on the planet. Yeah, you have a really good style, and you've got a really good painterly quality with your brushwork, and you've got an extraordinarily developed palette. 
And those are really hard things to achieve, especially the palette is a very hard thing to achieve. The only real crits I ever have for your work are style changes. There's always, you know, those little lighting things I can mention and stuff like that, but you already know all that. The biggest thing is, like, your designs are the only real, um, I don't even want to say weakness, because they're not, they're not bad, they just you could always do more with them. They're a little safe, I guess is the word. Your rendering and your palette and all that stuff is fantastic, but your designs are always a little safe. Yeah, I do paint overs at work though, little Bazinga. If you've got any paintings you've done, I'll happily do a paint over of that um, on my next stream. I stream every day. I do do paint. I do two paint overs a day. This is my second. So, if you were to come back tomorrow and you had a painting or something that you or a piece you'd done that you wanted a crit on, I'd be more than happy to do that. Now, the other thing I might do. Uh, Andy. How do you develop a palette? You study color and you understand what colors resonate with you and you develop a palette. You know, I can look at certain paintings by certain people like like Greg Manchess has a palette. You know, like I can I can tell a painting's his just based on the colors he puts down. And then, you know, the economy of his brush stroke and stuff like that. Certain artists have a definitive palette. And it's a very cool thing when you can achieve that. So, do you see what that does for the head? Just those little things. And then to make a triangle, because you want to think about negative reads, things like that. Bring some of the silver scales down into the shallow part of the hand, or the arm, I should say, not the hand. Bring some of the blue down, and it'll make like an implied triangle of blue. The two patches, and then the hand patch. Pop him off that rock more. Add more dark there, so it shows that he's clearly behind the rock, you know? Add more dark down here again to show that he's not on that. Now the only other thing I would do is what I was talking about at first. When I when I first came on here, I said the big thing I was missing was a narrative. And then the second thing was style. There's a very easy way. Actually, you might have already done it now that I'm looking at it. Is this supposed to be a Treyu sitting on the rock? Right here? Because I was going to add a Treyu on the rock. Is this supposed to be him? I can't tell. I see two things that might be legs. Yeah, because you've got this, this very cool rock here that the tail is curling around. And the fact that the tail is curling around this rock and then turning back in means that it should be pointing towards a secondary focal point. Compositionally, this is a very sweet spot to be in. So I would make a tray you big enough that you can actually read them. I would make them probably like, like this big. You know, big enough that the dragon is still impressive. And then, you know, have his, his buffalo cape breezing off like that. He's got a purple cape. In the book, he has a purpley red cape that is made from purple buffalo hide. So this will be where you add your punch of red. If you've ever studied, like, N.C. Wyeth and the old illustration masters, they frequently talk about a moment of red 
where in an image with a controlled palette, you bring in one very saturated warm color at the focal point, and it creates an incredible focus for the image, because everything goes right there. And I think right here, if you did cooler purple on the edges and warmer purple in the middle on his buffalo cloak, that's going to make that all it needs. So if he's here, you know, have him maybe, I don't know if he just met him. I'm not sure if this is when he gets wished away to the Southern Oracle. I'm not sure what scene in the book this is. But make this a Treyu, and he's got long hair in the book. Remember, he's green-skinned, and he has dark blue hair. He's got very weird colors. Yeah, if you put a tray you here, that's going to be a finished illustration. Because now it's going to have a narrative. Oh, the white and pink. I'm sorry, I thought it was just silver. My bad. Well, you can easily turn the blue I made pink. That's not a problem. It'll still work. Make them a cool, a cool kind of pink. But yeah, so I like this piece a lot, man. I want you to finish it. You see the difference though? Anya, I love you with all my heart. All this would be impossible without you. So yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, and like you did with the robot, I want to see you finish this and I want you to send it to me when you're done. So, come back on when you're finished, and uh, yeah, I'd love to see it. Love to see it. But yeah, man, this is um, one of the better, one of the better never-ending story illustrations I've seen done. I like the route you're taking it. So we got our bastion over here that we created earlier, and we got our Falcor. Just gonna do that real quick with Bastion. Saturate the colors more. Because I think that's gonna help. So we got our Bastion before and after. And now we've got our Falcor. Alright. Yeah, maybe we'll do a movie challenge. But anyway. I uh, love this illustration, uh, Andy. Please finish it. I'll uh, see you guys. I'm going to go. But uh, yeah, this was a good stream. So these were crits for SK Mop and Dark Lord Andy. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to save the stream the right way. So you guys can look this up later if you need it.
But uh, I'll see you. Have a good night.